Hi folks, I just wanted to do a really quick screencast to show you the simplicity of deploying OpenStack with a tool like the Cola project, uh, which is one of the uh, many containerized uh, OpenStack uh, services solutions. The thing about the Cola project is it really focuses on the process of getting all of the OpenStack services into containers first, and then uses some additional Ansible, well, actually uses the Ansible OpenStack deployment project as the, the core code for actually configuring those OpenStack resources in the containers. Uh, but then it also uses some additional Ansible uh, to actually then, then configure those containers when they get deployed so that you can do single node, multi-node, distributed node sorts of deployments. So what I just wanted to show you was not the build process, because that just takes time, um, but, but actually the process after the images have been created. So here, this is a, a little virtual machine on my laptop uh, running in VirtualBox. We have three network interfaces. One is the sort of external neutron-focused network interface. Uh, one is the local access so that it's easy to, without having to do SSH uh, port tunnels and things like that, uh, just an interface to actually be able to talk to the virtual machine. And then there's the VirtualBox NAT interface. This is an interface that the VirtualBox environment uses to, to communicate with the rest of the world. Um, so we have those interfaces defined. We have uh, a Docker environment uh, turned on on this machine. So Cola builds on top of Docker um, and, and uh, uses the, the basic Docker tools for actually, uh, basically Docker file tools for deploying uh, those containers in the Docker space. So this machine has that running. So if we do uh, Docker PS, that's show me what images are currently or systems are currently running. I have nothing running on this machine. Um, this is the address of the machine. It's not responding. Uh, and uh, if we look at the images, though, we'll see that we actually have, it turns out, two sets of images. There are two different tags here. Um, so there's a 2.0.2 CentOS based binary deployed uh, solution. And so you see Mar MariahDB, um, you see Nova, you see uh, uh, Neutron Services, uh, Glance, Heat. Uh, these are the core functions that uh, we have a configuration file that would want to use to deploy. Um, there's also um, the 3.0 tagged version of these same things. So CentOS binary um, uh, 3.0 uh, based, based service. So these are the images that we have to build from. Um, we actually define exactly what we want to build through a high level YAML uh, description file. Uh, it's in the COLA directory uh, called globals. Uh, helps if you can spell. And in here, we describe a number of the different uh, strategies for configuration, for updates, for service deployments. Um, and uh, here we can see that these are commented out because these are the defaults. Uh, so we're going to use CentOS and we're going to use binary, and that maps to the container name that we have. Uh, and here you can see I had actually deployed 202 before and, uh, uh, and 3.0. Uh, so that's why I have both of those image sets local on this, this, uh, this virtual machine. Um, one of the interesting things about the 2.02 set is that uh, the Cola team has actually loaded some some pre-built images into uh, the Docker Hub environment, so the, the online centralized Docker Hub. Um, so you can actually deploy with 2.02 without actually having to build out the images. Uh, there are others as well. I know that uh, I've seen the Ubuntu source-based and Ubuntu binary-based uh, 3.0 uh, tagged uh, images are also uh, out there. Uh, but in this case, I've built on CentOS and I'm using CentOS as my base OS, although that doesn't actually matter in, in the long run. Uh, we're just going to use the, the 3.0 release. I have a couple of other things to find here. This is the internal address that's going to be used for the services. So here, 192.168.56.10, that's the, the same address that I tried to hit the, with the web page. That wasn't working. Um, because there's nothing running it there yet. Um, we also define the network interfaces. This is specific to the environment that you're running, so you actually have to get these these pieces of information right. Uh, my external interface, I actually set it up through a VETH pair uh, that talks to a bridge that then finally talks to the physical interface. And I did that so that I could deploy into this kind of an environment, a, a virtual machine environment locally, or also into a, uh, uh, a, a cloud-based environment where I might only have one actual physical interface and maybe even only one IP address to, to work with. Um, so this is also set up that way. And then the rest of it, I've pretty much left uh, uh, stock standard uh, in terms of the configuration.
so that's how we actually get the, the how we tell Cola what it is that we want to deploy and potentially tweak some of the parameters, some of the services that we want, might, might want to enable, things of that nature. Uh, and there's a lot of configuration that can go into it. But then the actual deployment is really simple. We use Cola Ansible. This is a wrapper around Ansible that, that pre-establishes the Cola environment. So defines where the inventory file is that Ansible would need, uh, where, where the, the modules and the libraries that Ansible needs to, to have in order to use the Cola model for deployment and we say deploy very easy uh, so this now takes uh, about a minute and a half or two minutes and it's going through and launching the containers uh, writing out some configuration files for those containers uh, making sure that some of the, the the core services that Cola uses some of the tools it's using to actually do all this work are, are enabled uh, here it's starting up the database uh, container so that we actually have the backing data store for um, for the OpenStack environment um, this is a, a database in a container it's always one of those things of is this the right approach should this be a VM? Uh, but this is the model that, that that's being used for Cola is that all of the services are containerized. In fact, each of the effectively service processes has its own container. So um, when we were looking at the configurations earlier, you saw that there were Nova and Neutron and, and other services, but even in the Nova service, every service component in Nova, so the API, the server, the scheduler, the conductor, and actually in this case, even the Nova compute service um, all have their own containers. Now, Nova Compute is talking to Libvirt, uh, which is the the, the uh, uh, Linux KVM-based uh, interface for talking to virtualization on this machine. And this machine is then running QMU, so the emulated uh, para-virtualized version of the the hypervisor solution within, within this Linux environment, this CentOS Linux environment. Um, the actual libvirt processes still run on the, the the base operating system so those those systems run on the base operating system whereas the control plane nova compute runs as a container uh, and that's i think one of the really interesting pieces here if i need to upgrade the control plane I can just restart the container, basically point it at a new container image and say, run that one rather than the one that is currently running. I do have to provide the configuration for that running container um, and, and, and make sure that that aspect of the service is also available and Cola can help with all of that. Um, so as you can see, we're now starting all of the different containers. Uh, here we see we're starting conductor and scheduler, etc. cetera. Um, we didn't have ironic running, so that was skipped. So you see all the light blue is the skipped uh, containers, things that are, it is not doing. Um, now it's getting ready to get the uh, Neutron services up and running. So it just went through and did all the configuration process, uh, make sure that, that it has the right, uh, the right resources and configuration for, uh, for the basic Neutron environment. Uh, starts bridge, DHCP, L3, right? So this is going through and starting all these services. And while I've been talking over this last, uh, what is it here, a uh, uh, minute and a half, two minutes, um, you can see that all these different services are being configured and being brought online. And this really, to me, is the, the, the key benefit of, of this particular environment. In the past, um, I've, I've experienced this step taking uh, potentially hours. Um, the, the build of the containers is the thing that actually takes the longest time. And, and that is usually the step that when you're deploying onto bare metal uh, is taking the long time. I have to pull the code from somewhere. I have to build out those repositories, expand the code out of their uh, RPM or Debian packages, uh, update the configurations. But at this point, we now have, uh, at least we should have, a running, uh, running environment. So uh, as with all live demos, eventually you want to see the thing actually work. Um, so here we've just restarted uh, into this environment. And uh, I have my defaults that, that, that these are the, the, inf the information that I use. Uh, passwords, there's actually a password file as well for the, the Cola service um, to define all the passwords for all the different services and service interactions. Um, the only one that I changed from the default generate all these random passwords for me model, which is what Cola does by default, uh, is the actual OpenStack admin user, just because I like to remember my user name passwords for, for these sorts of uh, simple online projects, rather than having a you know 30 character random string provided for me. Uh, but at this point, we have an OpenStack environment. We have no instances. We have no network. We, this is the, the current modern model of how OpenStack comes to you. Um, the, the one thing that still does exist is, uh, uh, you know, if we go to networks, there are no networks to find. Uh, but this entire service is now functional, and this is, to me, the real value of, of Cola. The, the second part is if, uh, for example, uh, we needed to make a change, um, the, the actual configuration 
for something like Nova Compute. Uh, let me get the right name. Uh, the configuration actually exists here. And so this is the Nova to Conf, uh, uh, conf file that is specific to the compute aspect of uh, of the, the Nova service. So this is the, the configuration file that only applies to the Nova Compute container. Well, it turns out that I know that in this environment, this virtual box on a, on a Mac environment, um, I actually have to go make one modification, uh, and that is in the libvirt section, I actually want to add, uh, I want to add the vert type. All right, so now I've made a change to the configuration, and in order to make that change actually take effect, uh, we're going to use the docker command to restart our Nova compute container. And this is the process for updating a configuration, for changing a configuration, for modifying a configuration. From the perspective of debugging this environment, this is a, a, a night and day difference to how we've worked with uh, with systems in the past. Um, partially because because of the containerization, it's very easy to understand how to restart the processes. Now, this is very similar to restarting a process using something like the OpenStack uh, Service Manager, OpenStack-Service process that the Red Hat folks introduced a while back, and just saying, I would like to restart the Neutron service or the, 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 the Nova services. Um, so there are some similarities to other models for doing this, but this leverages the container uh, workflow, the container orchestration flow, and I find really provides a lot of value in how uh, how these orchestration pieces fit together. So that's really what I wanted to show you guys. Uh, thanks for thanks for watching, and hopefully this uh, proves useful. Um, again, the, the the projects themselves, Cola. You can go to GitHub OpenStack Cola. Uh, that's that's this path. Um, I've actually created a little project, uh, some Ansible, just to actually get the initial configuration of the environment pulled together. Um, because in order to, to run Cola, you need to have a Docker environment. In order to run Cola, you need to make sure that your host file and, and a number of other services are set up correctly. And uh, as we were looking at the, the globals file, you have to also define the, the, the path and the, the network's interfaces and things of that nature so that the Cola system knows how to use the infrastructure you have. Um, so I've, I've taken the, the model that exists in the Cola pages uh, that describes this and actually codified it in Ansible. Uh, um, so uh, this is something that, that works for sure on CentOS. I think there's still some, some little glitches that I need to update in the Ubuntu environment, uh, but should be able to, uh, to help you at least accelerate a, a virtual box-based all-in-one uh, COLA environment for your testing. Uh, and uh, I'll look at extending this to also support a multi-node environment in the future. Uh, so thanks, uh, thanks for that. Hopefully this, this code, uh, code base all uh, looks useful to you, um, and we look forward to your feedback.